Imagine that you have a research question about a certain population. This is your population. Now the people in your population are either purple or yellow, and you want to know what proportion of the people are purple. But you don't have the time to measure the color of every single person in the population. So instead, you take a sample of the population and determine the color of those people, hoping that what you observe will be representative of what's happening in the wider population. And you observe that 90% of the people in your sample are purple and 10% are yellow. But could this be just due to chance? Might it be the case that there are equal number of purple and yellow people in your population and that you just happened to, by chance, select a sample with this extreme proportion of purple people? Well, of course, this is possible. Your intuition is that it's unlikely, or shall we say, improbable. Let's imagine that there is, in fact, no difference, that there are equal numbers of purple and yellow people, and we're going to call this our null hypothesis. Now you can perform a statistical test, and in this case it's a z-test, and that's going to give you a p-value. Now the p-value is the probability of obtaining a result as extreme or more extreme than what you've observed. This assumes the null hypothesis is true. In other words, in this example, if in the population 50% of the people were in fact purple, what are the chances that we'd get a random sample in which, by chance, we found that 90% of the people were purple? It would be very unlikely, the probability would be low, in other words, the p-value would be very small. So if the p-value is small, then you can reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the difference observed in your sample is statistically significant. But what do we mean by small? How small is small enough to reject the null hypothesis? Before we do our statistical test, we decide on a cutoff, and we call that our alpha value. So the alpha value is the cutoff point that you compare your p-value to to determine whether the p-value is small enough to conclude that your results are unlikely to have occurred by chance. Now let's take a look at how to apply the principles of hypothesis testing and interpreting the p-value for the t-test, the chi-square test, ANOVA, and the correlation test. We're going to take a quick look at some of the more commonly used statistical tests. If you can understand which tests to use when with respect to these tests, you'll find the more complicated statistics much easier to understand. So get the basics right. You'll notice I'm not going to talk about any formulas here. I'm going to talk about understanding the question that you're asking and how to use a particular test to get an answer to that question. Okay, so let's dive right in. My name is Greg Martin. I've got longer videos on stats that you can watch. This is going to be a real quick one, but just so that you know what you're seeing on the screen at the moment is a cheat sheet that I've created, and we're going to talk through the various bits and pieces there within, but you can get this PDF. It's very easy to get. I'll just quickly show you how in one second. My website is learnmore365.com. Uh, I'm signed in. Signing in is for free, of course. You can create an account for free. Click on free resources. That'll take you to the free resource library. You can scroll down. You can filter the resources using these little categories on the side. So I'm going to click on research and stats. Here's the statistics cheat sheet. Click on download and boom shakalaka. There you go. So let's look at how we can apply the t-test in this example, right? We've measured the average weight of men and the average weight of women in the sample that we've got. And we've seen that there's a difference. Now that difference could be real or it could just be by chance. It might just be a fluke. We may have taken a sample that happens to have a difference that's not really representative of the wider population. So how do we decide the extent to which we can have confidence in this sample that we've got? Well, we make an assumption. Let's assume that there's no difference in the real population, right, that we can't really see. We're not going to measure everybody. But let's assume that it's the case, that in actual fact, there's no difference in the weight of men and women in the population. If that were true, how likely would it be that we would have gotten a sample that shows the difference that we've observed. And that is exactly what the t-test will tell you. It'll tell you the probability of, by chance, getting a sample that shows this difference if it were the case that in actual fact, in reality, there was in fact no difference. So if the p-value is very small, we can say it's very unlikely, right, because there's a small probability that the null hypothesis is true, that there is no difference in the weight of men and women. So we can reject it. We can say, we don't believe it. We don't have confidence in that idea. And if we can reject the null hypothesis, we then can accept that in actual fact, in the population from where the sample came, there is a difference in the weight of men and women. And that's how the t-test works. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, let's keep going, boom shakalaka. Now let's talk about the ANOVA, kind of in its simplest form. This is the analysis of variance. Essentially, it's asking the same kind of question as the t-test, but 
In this case, you've got a categorical variable with more than two categories. Or you could do it for even for two, but for two or more categories. So let's say uh, we've looked at the weight of people in three countries, like America, Britain, and Russia. And in our sample population, we've observed that there is a difference. We've conducted an ANOVA test. We get a p-value that tells us that if it were the case that in actual fact, the weight of people in all three countries was exactly the same, it would be very unlikely, the p-value, very unlikely that we would have seen the difference that we did in our sample. So we can reject the null hypothesis and, and we can accept the fact that there is a difference. Does that make sense? Now the chi-squared test is a little different. And the difference is because in the chi-squared test, you've got a different combination of variable types, right? You've got two categorical variables. In other words, two variables in which the data can be put into buckets in both cases, right? For the t-test, you had one categorical variable, in this case, sex, male or female, and the other variable was numeric, right? So you had this distribution which had a mean, an average. For the chi-square test, you don't have a numeric variable, but you've got a second categorical variable, right? So you could still have sex, male or female, but you could also have a second categorical variable as in uh, small, uh, medium height and tall, right? Short, short, medium and tall. So th three categories once again. And as you can imagine, for these categories, you can think of proportions, right? So for short people, there'll be a, a certain proportion of them will be men and a certain proportion will be will be women, male and female. And for medium height people, a certain proportion will be men and a certain proportion will be women, right? So you've got these proportions that you get from these categorical variables. And now, when, once you understand that, these are the two variables we've got. After that, everything about what we're going to do in terms of inferential statistics is exactly the same as the t-test in ANOVA, right? We're going to say we've taken a sample and we've seen a difference. We've seen that there's some sort of association between sex and, and height category. And we're asking the question, is that association real? Is it statistically significant? Or is it the case that we happened to, by chance, take a sample that represented that sort of difference, but in actual fact in the population, that difference doesn't really exist. So we make the assumption. We have a null hypothesis. We, let's make the assumption that in actual fact, in the wider population from where the sample came, there's no relationship between sex and height category, that, all, that the proportions are all exactly equal. We do the chi-square test and it gives us a p-value. If the p-value is very, very small, it means that we cannot have confidence. It's very unlikely that that null hypothesis is true. It's unlikely that if it were the case that there's no association between sex and height category, it's unlikely that we would have gotten the sample that we did with the differences that we saw. So we can reject that. We reject the null hypothesis and we accept the fact that in actual fact, there is some sort of an association between sex and height category. Got it? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's keep going. Boom shakalaka. And for the correlation test, the exact same principles apply. In this case, again, we've got a difference in the type of variable that we've got. We've got two numeric variables, right? So let's Im imagine we've got weight and age. Both of them are numeric variables, no categorical variables. And if you've got two numeric variables, you can imagine that there could be an observed association between the two. As age goes up, weight goes up, right? You can imagine that there's a correlation. So we take a sample of data. In our observation, we see a correlation and we ask the question, is that real? Is it statistically significant? Or might it be the case that there's no correlation and that by chance we happen to get a sample in which erroneously this correlation seemed to exist? So we do a correlation test. Once again, we get a p-value. The p-value tells us that uh, if the p-value is very small, we cannot accept the assumption that there's no correlation and we must accept the fact that there is in fact some sort of correlation between the two numeric variables, right? So uh, there'll be a link on the screen that you can click on so that you can get uh, this cheat sheet and have a look at it in your own time. Thanks for watching. Don't ever change, don't do drugs. Always do your best. Boom shakalaka. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.